Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today got a quick little video for those who are new to my channel and don't understand what this whole open source software thing is. Or maybe you just found this video floating around out there on YouTube, you know, you're looking at what is this open source software stuff. So just going to spend a couple of minutes explaining what is open source software. So let's start by going right to Wikipedia and we'll look at their definition. And it says open source software is computer software software with its source code made available with a license in which the copyright holder provides the right to study, change, and distribute the software to anyone and for any purpose. Open source software may be developed in a collaborative public manner. So, uh, you know, whereas uh, uh, you may have there is proprietary software out there. For example, Microsoft Windows is proprietary. The source code is not available. So you can't go and look at it and say, oh, there's a bug right there. I can fix that. No, uh, it's all up to Microsoft. So kind of moving on a little bit on the Wikipedia page, it says open source software development or collaborative development from multiple independent sources generates an increasingly more diverse scope of design perspective than any one company is capable of developing and sustaining in the long term. A 2008 report by the Standish Group states that adoption of open source software models have resulted in savings of about $60 billion per year to consumers. So uh, let me kind of come up with uh, you know a little hypothetical to kind of give you an idea of, of, of what we're talking about here. So let's say, for example, I don't like any of the email programs that are out there. I want to email desktop client. Um, none of the ones out there really, I'm, I'm, I'm not really happy with any of them. So I'm going to develop my own. So I develop this, this, uh, this desktop email client and I make the, the source code, make it open source. Uh, and then I start sharing it with uh, uh, my YouTube viewers. Uh, you know, they start playing with it. Some of them, uh, you know, they'll send me suggestions on here's a feature that we'd like to see added or uh, here's an issue, a problem that we're having, a little bug. So it gives me some feedback. I can improve the source code. Now, some of those people that are that are using my uh, my email program, they're coders, and they're probably better coders than I am. So they, uh, you know, as they're going through the the source code, they find ways to fix some of those problems or to incorporate some of those features that we've been that we've been wanting and just haven't developed yet so they send their their uh their changes their their fixes to me and i review them and i can either accept or or not accept them the stuff that gets accepted gets incorporated into the source code and makes the email program better for everyone that's using it so over time if this becomes a popular email program I end up getting more collaborators um, in, in the email program improves even more, gets more features, um, more stable, all that kind of stuff. So you can see the kind of, you know, the, the benefits to, to this kind of model. Um, at the same time, maybe somebody goes and, and submits some changes and I really don't want to go in that direction. Maybe I want this desktop email client to be nothing but emails. I just I just want to deal with email. And this guy, he goes and submits, uh, submits some changes so that you can incorporate calendars or uh, some kind of note-taking uh, uh, application into the email program. I don't want that. I just want email. So I reject that uh, those changes. Now, what th that developer or that, that, that that person that was trying to add to the source code, what he may do is he might say, hey, Alex doesn't know what he's doing. I'm going to go and create a fork, which is he's going to uh, take my original code, incorporate the changes, and then create basically his own email program. And, uh, you know, there, there are plenty, plenty of uh, examples of forking of code out there. Um, the cinnamon desktop 
it, that desktop environment originally started as a fork of uh, GNOME 2. You know, the, there were some people that did not like the direction that GNOME was going when it went to from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3. They decided to fork the code and uh, create their own desktop environment. Another one is LibreOffice. Uh, you know, they took they took um, what OpenOffice was doing and kind of went their own direction with it. And, you know, this is one of those instances where the fork uh, became more popular than the original. Um, and to the point now that the, uh, you know, uh, open office is, is barely hanging on there and LibreOffice is probably the most popular of the, uh, the open source, uh, office suites out there. So, uh, that's kind of an example of what, uh, you know, how things can go with the, uh, with, uh, open source software. Um, and while we're talking about open source, uh, a lot of times you will see it referred to as free software. Um, and, and, you know, there's the, you know, there, there's a group, not a, I don't want to say a group of people, but a fair number of people that refer to it as free software and then say free as in uh, free speech. Okay. That part of it makes sense. That to, to me, I much prefer the term uh, open source software. It describes the software. You don't have to ask, okay, are you talking about free as in free speech or free as in no cost to you? Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm not a big one on, on, you know, you got to use it, use this term or you got to use that term, you know, whichever you want to use is fine. Just to me, uh, open source software, it is a, to me, it is a much better description of what we are talking about as, as opposed to the term free software. By the way, while we're talking about, about it, open source software, it does not necessarily have to be free as in it doesn't cost you anything. A lot of times open source software is a free of charge software, but, uh, you know, you may be charged for, uh, open, uh, open source software. Um, it just depends. Um, so anyway, I hope this uh, little video cleared things up for you. If you were wondering, okay, what is this open source software stuff? Personally, I am trying to, uh, right now I'm trying to move all of my, uh, my uh, workflow to, uh, 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 to an open source model so that uh, I'm not going to say every single thing, every single program that I use is open source, but I'm trying to get the bulk of it there. Um, I'm mostly there, got a little more work to do, and uh, I will have a future video on, uh, you know, how I'm doing that, the software I'm using, all that kind of stuff. So be sure to check in on the channel and uh, see those new videos as they come out. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, and I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.